Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mengs, and today I'm going to be reviewing every single unit from my Fire Emblem 6 Create My Units livestream. In case you missed it, it was a playthrough of FE6 that I streamed live, and chat was able to submit my playable characters. They were essentially replacing the characters already in the ROM, they were able to make up their own growth rates with a budget, of course, and they were able to select a boon and a bane. And the result was a very weird playthrough of FE6, a very meme playthrough of FE6 with a lot of strange characters, but a very fun one. And this ROM is available for public download if you go visit the download station in the video description. It's not a Discord server run by me, it's run by one of my friends, but you can find it there. So, uh, I'm going to be going through every single playable character in this ROM, and I'm going to be rating them 1 to 5 stars based on how good I think they are. Even the characters that I did not end up using, I'm still going to review them uh, based on how creative, how good, just how useful I think they are overall. And we're going to be starting off with the main character here, Tyrone. He's a brigand replacing Roy, and this automatically means that he's a lot better than Roy, because unlike Roy, who has to wait until chapter 21 to promote, uh, Tyrone can just promote with a hero quest as soon as he hits level 10, and this can give you a berserker in the early game, which is really good. Sadly, Tyrone is a very lopsided unit. He's all about HP and strength, and sometimes he'll get speed as well. His other stats will not go anywhere on their own. He doesn't have a skill growth, he doesn't have a luck growth, he barely has a defense growth, and he doesn't have a rest growth. So this means that, outside of stat boosters and promo gains, these stats will never increase on their own. And this makes Tyrone very hard to use. Sure, he'll have a lot of strength, sure, he'll double, but he'll usually miss one of his two attacks. Sometimes, he'll miss both. I found that in order to use Tyrone, I needed to give him an A support. Luckily, he has the Dark Affinity, which gives hit, and there is another character he can support with. I mean, he can support with all the early game characters because he's Roy, uh, and many of those supports will also give him hit. So I supported him up with Nohime, and this is a very important support for him to have. But even with an A support with double hit, his hit rates would seldom go above 60%. Uh, and he just, even with weapon triangle advantage, he would miss a lot of his attacks. So, a really tough unit to use. I'm still gonna rate him three stars because I think that having an early game Berserker, if you promote him, uh, is incredibly useful. You know, he does get that 30% crit boost. Uh, but he is reliant on stat boosters. I, I recommend giving him secret books, Draco shields. Uh, he needs all the help that he can get. But if you do that, he is a passable main character. You're forced to use him in every single map, so I definitely think you should give him stat boosters, because unlike other characters who you can bench, you're stuck with Tyrone. Uh, he's a very hard unit to use, but he is rewarding to train if you figure him out. He's just He requires a lot of setup, but I would say he's better than Roy. And up next, we have Megasus. I believe he replaces Bors. Now, Megasus is a Pegasus, uh, which is really nice. I mean, you do get Shana normally in Chapter 2, but it's kind of cool to have a flyer this early. Uh, Megasus is a bit of a meme unit. Uh, he has a lot of strength and defense, uh, but sadly, kind of like Tyrone, he doesn't have skill or luck. Uh, he has a 2% skill growth and a 2% luck growth, which is very annoying. Now, uh, he does have potential. I mean, 10 con is really nice. He can use Iron Lances without losing speed. And he does have 6 base strength and 8 base speed, which means that he can actually reliably get up to a point where he will double. The only problem is his speed growth is also a little shaky at 25%, so he's very hard to train. Um, without skill, speed, or luck, even if he has a decent base speed, his late game potential is not very good. I lost him personally uh, in Chapter 3, I believe. I put him in range of an archer. So I don't really know how good he would have turned out, but looking at these growth rates, I think he's going to be tough to utilize. Of course, he has very good rescuing potential. Like, 15-8 is very good. He can pick up pretty much anyone. And he's still a flyer, and that's really nice. And he has very good strength, defense, and resistance. He's going to turn into an absolute tank. The problem I have with Pegasus Knights that are quote-unquote tanky is that it doesn't matter how much defense you have, because triple effectiveness on bows means that he's going to die to arrows no matter what. In a game like FE7, where bows only do double damage, I could see a tanky Pegasus being nice, but Megasus is still going to get shot down by steel bows, even with, like, cap defense. So it's not really going to allow him to tank. I mean, once he gets a Healer Shield, sure, but that happens way later in the game, so... I don't think Megasus is very good for that reason. I'm gonna rate him 3 out of 5 stars. Yeah, I know, flyer utility and all that, but there are better flyers in this game. Uh, and I, I think that while I appreciate the meme that Megasus is, I don't think his growth rates are properly placed. I think his late game is going to be very shaky. With, with 3 base skill and a 20% skill growth, yeah, he's not gonna hit shit. 
he, he'll need a support. Luckily, though, he does have the Dark Affinity, which grants grant him hit. So if you can support him up with another Flyer, he can definitely become good. But he will be completely reliant on his supporting partner. And then we come to the second Flyer in your starting squad, Noringai the Vivern Rider. And uh, yeah, Noringai is pretty damn good. Uh, he has incredibly good strength, skill, and speed and balanced growth rates in all three, which is nice. And he also has a beastly con of 14. It's actually a little overkill. He could have probably had 13. I think Steel Lance is way 13. Uh, I think the Brave Lance is probably the heaviest weapon in the game, but you don't get a Brave Lance until much, much later. So, uh, but still, having 14 con means that he'll never get weighed down by heavy lances, which is nice. And he also has a very good speed. He has a good base and a good growth rate, so he'll get to a point where he can double things pretty fast. And 8th base defense is also really strong. Vibrant Riders have very good bases. His only problem is a very shaky luck base stat of 2 and a luck growth of 30%. He's very likely to get crit. He's another character with the Dark Affinity, though. So he has some good supporting options. And for that reason, I'm going to rate him 4 out of 5 stars. I think he's a very solid early game flyer. And if you train him, he's certainly going to become good. But again, you still need to watch out for those archers. They are everywhere in the early game. And it kind of limits where you can place him. But he's sure it's a lot better than Megasus, for sure. And if you train him up, you're going to get a really, really solid Vibrant Lord. The only problem, as I said, is his low luck base. I mean, he's going to be liable to be critted by a lot of enemies, but with his insane defense, he will actually be able to take a few crits. He won't be able to take arrows, but he will take crits. So I think he's a very solid character for that reason. And then we come to Nohime. In my run, I trained her and I paired her up with Tyrone. And she also has dark, by the way. God, this is like the fourth character. Do they all have dark? So many dark affinities, holy shit. I mean, it's a good affinity, so I understand why people pick it, but still. Uh, Noime is a unit that I invested a lot into. I gave her like two angelic robes, and I think a bunch of other stat boosters as well. And it still took her forever to be good. Her bases are just incredibly bad. Uh, I do believe the creator gave her an HP bane as well. So she has 11 hit points, which is just atrocious. She will be one-shot by pretty much every single unit. And she also has a very low con. So she loses some speed from Flux Tomes. So she is just incredibly hard to use. Um, honestly, this is like Sophia, but you get her in Chapter 1, which people would think is good, but these stats are still not good for Chapter 1. Uh, she does have very good magic skill and speed, so she will grow those stats, but she still needs a lot of kills and a lot of investment to get there. I'm gonna rate her 2 out of 5 stars, I don't think she's very good. I invested into her and she became good eventually, but the same can be said for Sophia, you know, you can invest into Sophia and she'll become good eventually. You just, you for, force feed her kills. She still has 39 levels to grow, and with those growth rates that means she's going to hit a plateau at some point where she'll start doubling and do a lot of damage. But there are a lot of other characters in this ROM who can reach that uh, stage just fine on their own and without the hassle that is Noeme, so I, I just don't think she's very good. Even if I ended up using her and she ended up being one of my best units, I still don't objectively think she's a good unit. And then we come to Makalan, and yeah, look at that, fire affinity, thank god. <laughs> Makalan, I think he was named Jengish Mac at the start of this ROM, but then the creator wanted to change him around. So Makalan, he is a nomad, and that's kind of nice, he replaces Volt, so he's kind of like Volt, but with a horse, and much better basis, because the nomad is just a better class than the archer. Um, Makalan is a very frail unit. It's very hard to use. Uh, he does not have defense or resistance. They will not grow naturally on their own. And his skill growth is also kind of low at 20%. But I didn't find this to be a huge issue because bows generally have pretty high hit rates in Fire Emblem 6. And unlike the other units, he actually has a luck growth, so he won't be liable to get uh, critted. However, um, his hit points is kind of low, even though he has a good hit point growth. I did find that he was very frail uh, very often, especially like placing him in range of mages was very scary because his resistance won't go anywhere. So I found that many like Elfire mages on the Western Isles just straight up one shot at him, so it was kind of hard to use in that regard. But his damage output is fantastic. Uh, it's like having an early game Sue with a better strength. He will double pretty much everything because he starts out with 9 base speed, which is fantastic. And he has a 70% speed growth, so he will just cap his speed really early on, and you'll have a Nomad that can double everything, which is fantastic. I mean, his damage output is really good. This is what you want from a Nomad. You want the Glass Cannon, that is what he is. You do need to take care of him. You can't just place him in enemy range, he will die. So he needs some kind of defensive support, preferably, if you want to do that. But what I found with Makalan is he's just a really nice damage dealer. I'm gonna rate him 4 out of 5 stars. Really solid unit. Also has insane rescue potential. He has 18-8, so he can pretty much pick up anyone. Solid unit. 
And then we come to the game's Jagan Albion. He replaces Marcus, which means he's obviously going to be a very important unit. Uh, he starts out with a Fimble Vetter, which is incredibly good. Uh, this, he has this because Marcus had a uh, Silver Lance in his inventory. So this is kind of like his Silver Lance, quote unquote. Very good Tome, conserve it. It's going to really help you out in the early game. He does have the Fire Tome for other purposes, but the Fimble Vetter I found was very useful in like chapter three and four. Um, and because he replaces Marcus, he gets his weapon rank, so he gets an A rank in his main weapon type, which is Anima, and E rank in staves. So this is a Jagan that can heal, which is incredibly useful. And it does take him a long time to get to D rank in staves. In, in Fire Emblem 6, this takes forever. But just the fact that he can heal makes him incredibly valuable. Now, his stats are not as great as uh, FE6 Marcus. Uh, he has an insane skill base of 18, because I think the creator gave him a skill boon for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, but his other stats are a little shaky. He has decent hit points, of course, and 6 defense is good for a Sage in Chapter 1. But his magic and speed are a little mediocre, and they're not going to grow a lot on their own. So while Marcus, even on hard mode, will double a lot of the slower enemies, Albion seldom will. I uh, find that he will just really only hit once, which means the Fire Tome is usually too weak to get the job done. He actually needs to use the Fimble Vetter in order to set up kills for the other scrubs. So, combat-wise, Albion is not fantastic, I think. He is uh, tricky to use, but utility-wise, he's fantastic, because he is um, a Jagan that can heal. So he'll always be useful, you can always heal him, and I found myself deploying Albion in a lot of chapters in the mid-game until I eventually lost him in the desert. Uh, and I probably would have deployed him for quite a while just because, you know, staff utility, it's it's good. And reliable range chip damage. I mean, he will never miss anything with 18 skill. So he'll always be able to chip at range. And enemies in FE6 do not have resistance. So again, he'll never stop being useful. However, I'm still only going to rate him 4 out of 5 stars. I don't think he's quite at the level of Marcus in terms of how useful he is. He's nice, but his lack of combat makes him a little bit lacking in that area. I still think he's a useful unit, uh, and he has a lot of utility, but he's nowhere near the level of helpful that Marcus is in Vanilla FE6, in my opinion, just because his combat isn't that great. And then we go over to Chapter 2, and uh, we get our Merlinus replacement, Sith. Um, not much to say about this guy, he's just Merlinus. He actually kind of has worse growth rates, but you're never going to see him level up, because he needs to be attacked 100 times for that to happen. See, I don't really much to say about this one. He's literally just Merlinus. I, I don't really have a rating for him. He's, he's the convoy. Convoy out of 10. And then we come to our Ellen replacement, Angelina. And Angelina, um, like, when you look at her, she's like, oh wow, this is a meme unit. Look at her luck growth, 110% luck. This is not good. And yeah, it's not fantastic. I mean, luck is not a great stat. And 30% HP means she's going to be so incredibly frail. I mean, 30% HP and 10% defense. I mean, this is a squishy mage. However, I found that Angelina was actually incredibly useful. Uh, the fact that she gets luck every single level, sometimes even two points of it, means that she will cap luck, guaranteed. This combined with her very good speed growth of 50% means that she's very likely to cap luck and speed. And if you cap your luck and speed in FE6 and you get a good support to boot, you can pretty much ha make sure that the enemies have 0% hit on you. And I think this is very much what Angelina would have become had I not gotten her killed. Sadly, she's a risky unit to use. Everything one-shots her. Hand axes, javelins, like any, any enemy that comes within her range and lands a lucky hit on her, she's dead. She needs an angelic rope. I think I ended up giving my Angelic Robe to Nohime instead, but I probably should have given it to Angelina. If you can give her a single Angelic Robe, I actually think she's fine. I think that will actually prevent her from being one-shot for quite a while. But if you don't give her an Angelic Robe, she's tough to use. But if you train her, you're gonna end up with the most dodgy Sage in the game. And like combine that with a good support, you'll have a unit that will never die. So I think she has insane potential. I'm gonna rate her three out of five stars though, because it takes a while for her to get there. There are better units in this room, room for sure. And, like, in a, in a vacuum, I just don't think she's that great. But she has insane potential if you train her. It's just that it requires a lot of investment to get there. And then we come to the Dick squad, as I like to call them. And replacing Dick is Kojiro, a Myrmidon. So what do you get if you take Rutger and you move him two chapters backwards with roughly the same stats? Well, you get Kojiro, pretty much. You get your Rutger two chapters earlier, and he is absolutely fantastic. Right off the bat, I'm gonna say he's a five-star unit. Really, really good. 12 constitution is insane for a Myrmidon. 
Kojiro can use Iron Blades and still double. Hell, he can even use the Steel Blade and still double. That's how much con this guy has. And that is just incredible. 9 base strength, 13 base speed is absolutely fantastic. He's very good strength, skill, and speed across the board. And even decent defense at 35%. He'll actually going to be quite tanky as well. Um, like, Swordmasters are fantastic in FE6. They get uh, an innate 15% crit boost, or sorry, 30% crit boost. And he's pretty much just going to perform like Rutger. In fact, I would actually say he's better than Rutger, because Rutger has shit con. So he will actually get slowed down if you give him heavy blades and stuff, at least early on. Whereas Kojiro will not. Kojiro can double with, with like, Iron Blades and do, like, insane amounts of damage. So just one of the best units in the game, for sure. Uh, I ended up benching him, funnily enough, just because I just, I used a bunch of other units. But it was honestly pretty silly, because uh, Kojiro is insane. Like, I ended up not training him for a while, because he was so good. And then when I brought him back, I think I lost him in the Water Temple, if I remember correctly. But that was just a fluke. Uh, I, I think if I'd actually promoted him earlier, he would have become one of the best units in the run, for sure. Up next, we have Coin replacing Shana. And when you immediately take a look at this unit, you're like, okay, what the hell is going on here? Like, look at those stats. They're garbage. Uh, she also comes with very strange weapons, like a Slim Sword and a Javelin, and not great weapon ranks. And, like, looking at her base is like one skill, oh, that sounds atrocious, right? But then you take a look at her actual basis and her growth rates. Now, she has the funny, like, balanced growth rate build that we saw a little bit of in this ROM. She's not the only character to be this way. She's like 43% in every growth rate. But when you actually take a look at her stats, like, 10 speed and 9 defense, that's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. Coin's gonna double everything. And she's going to keep growing that speed. And she will keep doubling everything. The only problem with Coin is very low strength and skill. But uh, she's going to grow that skill. Like, it's going to happen. I would maybe even advise giving her a secret book. And she definitely needs a good support. Uh, but, like, Coin was just one of the most useful units in my run. And even though she starts off kind of weird and has very low skill, it didn't really end up bothering me all that much because she could just tank everything. I could just send her into a bunch of enemies. She would just never die and she would double everything. So it was very easy to feed her kills and give her experience. I think she's a five-star unit, one of the best units in the ROM. Turns out Shanna's spaces are actually pretty good if she gets a proper class. So yeah, no, in in absolutely incredible unit. Um, she will just tank absolutely everything and be incredibly valuable. Then we have Transmender, and Transmender is just a joke unit. Like, you get a healer, which is nice, I guess. And I don't mind that Transmender doesn't have skill, like, because clerics don't need skill. Like, you can have 0% skill growth, I really don't care. Light magic is pretty accurate anyway, it doesn't really matter. And it's kind of nice that, uh, you know, like, he has speed and rest, I guess. I don't really know why he needs a 95% rest growth, like, this is a joke unit. Uh, at least he'll have decent avoid, I guess. But the problem with this unit is that he has a 0% luck growth. This means that if you promote Transmender to Bishop and you try to fight, he's gonna get crit in the face at some point. That happened to me. Lost him on the bridge, if I remember correctly, in the Melody chapter. Like, he just takes a lance to the face, it crits him, he dies. And that really sucks because, like, one of the cool things about having a Bishop is that you can actually have a combat unit that can fight a little bit, but Transmender can't fight. He's gonna just get crit in the face and die. Um, but, you know, he's a healer, I guess bad one, in my opinion. A, a jokey meme unit, but, you know, you can still use him as a healing. You need the healing anyways, so you're probably gonna deploy him in a few chapters, but yeah, not very good. Two out of five stars. Joke unit. And then lastly, we have Ikuru, and Ikuru is the first thief you get. You get a bunch, bunch of thieves in this ROM, I think uh, more than you get in Vanilla F6, if I remember correctly. And Ikuru is a pretty nice thief. Uh, she's very ba decent base speed. And also pretty good HP, because I think she replaces slot or weight, I don't remember which one, but she replaces one of the fighters, which means her base HP is very good. And uh, yeah, she has really good speed growth at 90%, she's gonna cap speed really quickly. And she's even gonna grow some defense, thanks to the 40% defense growth. Uh, so, you know, you train a crew up, you're gonna have a thief that is pretty durable, and the base HP on her is pretty nice. I do wish her HP growth was a little bit higher though, I think as a thief, you do want to have some good HP on you, so you can survive the occasional bolting or spell that gets thrown your way. But yeah, I mean, she's a thief. Three out of five stars. I, I rate pretty much all thieves in FE6 three stars just because of their thief utility. I don't really use them much in combat. You can use Ikuru in combat if you want to. She's not fantastic, but you can. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about her. And up next, we have the biggest meme of the run. It is Jumba. Yeah. 
This unit sucks. Like, like, meme rating? Five out of five. Actual rating? He's a one-star unit. He, he's a one-star unit. He's absolutely terrible. He replaces Chad, which means he gets his horrible basis, and he doesn't get Chad's great growth rates. And in, in the growth rate department, jump is not very good either. I mean, 35% strength is terrible for a fighter. He has, like, very high skill and decent rest. He's just all over the place. He, he, his growth rates are not very good. He has low basis and very, like, his, the growth rates that he really needs, he doesn't have. Like, sure, it's nice to have 45% speed, but 35% strength for a fighter is just not very good. And 35% defense and resistance is not good enough to make him tanky. If you want to use Jump, you have to spoon-feed him kills and give him a good supporting partner, which is what I did in my run. And even then, it took forever. Like, do you guys remember how arduously I had to train Jump to make him good? And even then, he didn't become good until, like, way later. So now, he is a one-star unit. But that's what makes Chat love him so much. Chat loves bad units. They love bad Mimi units. So Jumbo's kind of like the perfect unit for them. That's why they fell so much in love with him. He became the Jumbo mascot of this run. So yeah, it's fun to train him and turn him, turn him into something viable. I proved that it can be done, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna rate him highly. He's still a one-star unit. Still absolutely awful unit. But he's dumb. So he's kinda cool. And up next we come to Rahalia, the mercenary. She replaces Lou. And her stats are actually pretty damn nice for a level 1 unit. 7 base strength and 11 base speed is actually really good. Only problem with Rahalia is her con is a little low. She has 7 con, so she gets weighed down 3 points with a steel sword. Um, and she has D rank in swords, so she can't use the killing edge at base. But her potential is really good. I mean, she has a 50% strength growth and 80% speed growth. She's gonna cap speed 100%. And her 30% luck growth, while not amazing, is still good. Like, it's still good enough to the point where she will grow luck a little bit, to the point where she shouldn't get killed. However, uh, she does have a 40% HP growth, which is pretty atrocious. This is another reason why an Angelic Grove might be warranted on her. Her HP will not grow much on its own, so she's gonna be stuck in that very uncomfortable one-shot range by a lot of units. So that's gonna make her really hard to train unless you give her that rogue. But if you train her up, she's gonna become pretty good. As a hero, she'll kick a lot of ass. But it's gonna be quite risky getting her there. As I said, she really needs to. She really needs some help in the hit point department, and a defensive support would also be really good for her. But I think she's an average unit, three out of five stars. Not fantastic, not amazing, uh, but not terrible either. She has potential if you train her, but she's not fantastic. And then we come to the Chlorine replacement, Nosomi, and uh, when I saw that Chlorine would be replaced by an archer, I was kind of excited, because I was like, okay, that's going to be a very fast archer, that's going to double a lot of things. But I kind of underestimated how bad the archer bases were. She only ended up getting a base speed of 8 and a base strength of 4, which is really terrible. Uh, yeah, this unit is not very good, and... The creator also kind of screwed her over a little bit by giving her a 20% speed growth. I understand the rationale. He probably thought that Chlorine's base speed would be so good that, that the unit didn't end up needing a very high speed growth. And I think if he had just given her like a 30 or 40% base speed growth, I think that would have been a lot better. 20% is just a little too low. That averages out to like 1 speed every 5 levels. So she's going to be stuck on like... 10 to 11 speed in the mid game, which is not enough to double, and an archer that cannot double cannot really do a whole lot. And sure, she's gonna get some bonus from her promo against a sniper, she might be able to double a little bit in the mid game based on that, but I still don't think this unit is very good. I think she's a two star unit, maybe some potential if you train her up, but four base strength is just so low. Sure, she has a 60% strength throw, so she's gonna grow a lot on its own, but. Yeah, no. I, I, it's a tough spot to make a good archer in a Binding Blade game. Their, their stats are just so low, you really will have better luck trying to create a sniper because their bases are so much better. But yeah, not much you can do with an early game archer in this game. Even though there are some flyers to shoot down, Nasomi doesn't really have a lot of potential in my mind. And then we come to the Rutger replacement, Pasusu, and I was very excited about this one. Now, uh, since Rutger comes with a killing edge, he comes with a killer axe, because he's a pirate. And I was like, oh, this is actually going to be pretty good, because he replaces Rutger, which is one of the best units in the game, so he's probably going to be one of my best units, but I was kind of disappointed, honestly. Uh, I'm going to try to rate him in a vacuum, I'm not going to try to like compare him to Rutger too much, because that's very unfair. But I will say that the end result ended up being a unit that was not anywhere near Rutger's usefulness, because pirates 
first and all, first and foremost, they just don't have great stats. Axes are shit in Binding Blade. Like the Killing Edge is so much better compared to the Killing Axe. It's it's, it's insane. And he comes with a base skill of 6, which means that he's kind of unreliable. Now, don't get me wrong, base 10 strength and base 11 speed, pretty damn good. He's gonna double a lot of enemies, although I will say he's con of 9, a little on the low side. This is mostly due to Rutger, though, but could have maybe fixed this by giving him a con boon. I think that could have been good for him, maybe. I don't remember what kind of boon uh, Pazuzu gave this guy, but I think con would have been nice. So, yeah, he's just not very good. Uh, 33 hit points is nice, obviously, and 6 defense is not terrible, but yeah, he's... In my opinion, I was just kind of disappointed by this unit, because I expected him to be amazing, but he was just kind of okay. I still think he's a 4-star unit. I mean, he still promotes into Berserker, so if you train him up, he's gonna be insane. But just like Nosomi, uh, the creator gave him a 20% speed growth. And again, I understand the rationale behind this. You're like, okay, Rutgers base speed is so high that you can get away with a 20% speed growth. But 20% is just a little too low. I would have given him 30% and maybe taken 10% off another stat. Maybe lowered his luck growth from 55 to 45, for example. I think that would have made him a lot better. I appreciate that he has a decent luck growth of 55%. That is a rarity in this run. Everyone dumped luck, and as a result, um, I ended up losing a lot of units to low percentage crits, which was very frustrating. So Pasusu, he certainly has potential, Berserkers are insane, but uh, yeah, not quite as good as Rutger, sadly. Up next, we have the Dorothy replacement, and this ended up being a dancer. I remember running a poll on this one to see if it was acceptable, and you guys wanted me to, so yeah. You got a dancer a little bit earlier in this ROM, which makes Chapter 7 a lot more bearable, that's for sure. Here's Jung Cena. Not much to say about this guy, he, he's a dancer. He's got good speed, good luck, and like his avoidance will will improve as you level him up just like Larum. He's a dancer, so five stars. It's a pretty easy rating. Dancers are some of the best units in the game, and Zhang Cena is no exception. He's built and started just like a dancer should be. He didn't really need to have 5% strength and skill, I think the creator just put that on just for fla flair. You can give him 0%, he doesn't really need either. But yeah, uh, he's, he's good. And up next, we have the Soul Replacement, Megatron. And <laughs> Megatron is a very interesting unit because, by accident, I forgot to remove Soul's staff rank, which resulted in Megatron coming with a staff rank. I don't know why she has A. I don't know how that happened, but she does for some reason. And, uh, yeah, it was kind of weird. So, uh, when I realized that Megatron could use staves, Chad was like, No, no, keep it, keep it. We gotta keep it. We want an Armor Knight using staves. So she actually even has staff animations. She's a very unique Armor Knight. She actually has a magic stat instead of a strength stat. However, they are the same. So you can essentially treat her as having seven magic and strength. So she can hit with lances and heal, which makes her very unique. Probably the most unique unit in the ROM. Uh, her growth rates are also pretty solid. Balanced in most areas, a little bit low on luck, sadly. Two base luck, 20% luck growth is not fantastic, as she does replace Soul after all. And her resistance base is awful, and uh, her resistance growth is also pretty bad, so she'll struggle against magic. But she is very fast. Nine base speed and a 65% growth is insane for an armor knight. So if you train Megatron up, you'll get a very strong general that can double and deal a lot of damage. Like her offense is fantastic, and she has staff utility. For this reason, I think Megatron is actually one of the best units in the game. I think she's a 5-star unit. No, I'm not joking. I think she's a 5-star unit. I don't know why I didn't end up using her more, because I actually benched her, because I didn't think she was that good. But looking at her right now, like, she has an A rank in staves. Like, that's insane. That's absolutely insane. And she can use both staves and lances. As a general, she'll be able to use staves, lances, and axes. And 11 con is pretty nice. Uh, when she promotes to a general, she'll be able to use most weapons without being slowed down. So, yeah, I have no idea what I was thinking not training this unit. This is an incredibly strong unit. And then we come to the Sue replacement, Blimpy. Uh, he is a thief, and so by default, I'm just gonna rate him 3 out of 5 stars. I think all thieves are just like baseline 3 out of 5 stars. I don't really think Blimpy really separates himself much from the other thieves in this ROM. He comes a little later, so if you lose Hikiru like I did, you can use Blimpy. And I did use Blimpy as my main thief. I thought it was completely serviceable. His skill is a little bit low, but he doesn't really need skill because he uses swords. He just has a lot of speed and luck, decent defense as well. Not great resistance, but you know, it'll grow a little bit. 60% HP is also good for a thief. And 40% strength growth also isn't terrible. He can deal a little bit of damage. I actually found Blimpy pretty serviceable in combat. He was not hard to level up at all. There is one problem with Blimpy as a unit, and that's the fact that if you don't want to go to Sakai, you probably shouldn't train him. 
uh, because, of course, he replaces Sue, so any experience you give him will count towards the Sakai route split. But if you don't care about that, just go ahead and use him. And he's a thief anyway, so it's not like he really needs experience. Uh, someone also did point out that because he can't promote in this game, it's also harder to go to Sakai by default if you end up using both of the Pegasus Knight replacements, because, you know, like, Sue, you can promote her to a normal trooper and you can continue to get, get her experience, but Blimpy, he can only go up to level 20s. There are less levels to give to your Sakai units compared to your Ilya units, but unless you really care about Rat Split, this isn't really something that's gonna end up being an issue. Up next, we come to the Sellout replacement, or Jared replacement, whatever you want to call him. I personally like calling him Sellouts, because I think that's his official translation now. It's Russ the Hero, and Russ is incredibly good. Uh, for our 5-star unit, at least. He is as good as Sellout, if not better. His stats are certainly a lot better. 17 base skill and 16 base speed is absolutely fantastic. 11 base strength is good as well. Uh, Russ is pretty much going to double everything. Uh, very, very solid hero. Obviously, being a pre-promote, his growth rates are halved, so he doesn't have that much late-game potential. Uh, at this point, I had a lot of good units on my roster, so I didn't really end up using him much in my run, but he can certainly serve as, like, a replacement unit for quite a while to come. In this chapter, uh, he's going to be an absolute godsend, just like Sellout. Like, he, he will just completely carry Chapter 7 for you. Uh, very solid unit for this chapter and many chapters to come. As I said, solid 4 out of 5 star unit, just incredibly good. Uh, I don't remember his weapon ranks at the top of my head, and I don't remember exactly because he's a green unit here, so I don't remember, but I think his weapon ranks are pretty good. Comes with a steel blade, a steel axe, and a hand axe, which are not great weapons for him to have, honestly, because they're way heavier than his cons. He probably want to trade him an iron weapon or something like that, or a steel sword. He can use a steel sword without losing any speed, so that's a good weapon for him to use. And then we come to the Trek replacement, Bob the Armor Knight. I believe this was Hanako's submission, and uh, yeah, Bob is not a good unit. <laughs> I'm gonna say this right off the bat, one out of five stars. He's just not usable at all. I understand what Hanukkah was going for here. 13 base defense is actually pretty nice in this chapter. Bob will be able to tank most of the physical enemies with that. And he has a 75% defense growth, which is also pretty nice. But with zero base res and 10% resistance growth and a 1% speed growth, Bob is just gonna get doubled by any mage on this chapter. In fact, he's gonna be doubled by any mage, period. He's just gonna die. He's just like Barth in that regard. He can tank physical enemies, but he can't tank magical enemies. And so you have to constantly keep him out of range of mages, which really limits what you can do with him. If he had resistance, I think he'd be a lot better, but still. Yeah, now this unit, I don't really see it being viable. 13 con is nice, though. He can use Steel Lances at base, like, or without getting slowed down. Sadly, Steel Lances are garbage in FE6, so this doesn't really help him all that much. But yeah, no, not a good unit at all. I don't really see what you're going to do with this one. Maybe someone can prove me wrong. And up next, we have the Noah replacement, Ninja Oboro. And uh, it, it don't mind the glitchy map animations, that's just because I imported something that didn't belong in FE6. It doesn't glitch the game or anything, it just looks weird. Uh, yeah, so this unit, one look at this unit, I was not very impressed. I mean, it's a Noah replacement and it doesn't even have a mount and it's a soldier, so that means atrocious base stats. Um, however, actually it turns out that Ninja Oboro is has insane potential if you actually train her. She's another one of those even growth rate units that has like 40% in most areas, which kind of makes her annoying to train at first, but if you troop her true and really like feed her kills, she will reach a point where she'll become insane. Uh, she also promotes the Halberdier, which is an incredibly strong class. Her promo gains are insane. Like she gets like plus four or plus five in almost every stat, it's crazy. Because I based them off generals. I think I took the general class and I just gave him a little bit less speed. Or sorry, more speed and less defense. Uh, but they also get the 30% crit bonus because they're a single weapon class. So, <laughs> if you actually train and promote Ninja Boro, she will actually end up becoming one of the best units in the game. For that reason, I'm gonna give her 3 out of 5 stars, even though I think at base she's like a 1 star unit. Uh, just not a lot, like, those stats are just atrocious for Chapter 7, and her growth rates being 40% in every area means that she's also quite slow to, grow to train. I, I had to, like, meticulously train her up in Chapter 8x because the enemies are very weak there. And only, like, after spoon-feeding her kills for, like, several chapters did she start reaching a point where she started being able to fight. And only, like, in the mid to late game did she actually become an insane unit. I can't really rate a unit higher than 3 out of 5 stars for that kind of performance. But I will say, if you actually train her up, you will get an absolutely incredible unit. But there is another uh, late game halberdier that joins, if you want to actually use a halberdier, that I actually say will 
probably like, he, he won't equal Ninja Boros, he'll be a lot faster than him, but he'll still be able to kill a lot of stuff, so uh, you don't need to train Ninja Boros if you want a Halberdier, there is another one in the game as well. And up next, we come to the Astolfo replacement, DS Notch, and he is the only Lord available in this game. And he's actually quite good. I actually rate him 4 out of 5 stars. Now, why do I rate him 4 out of 5 stars? He's a sword-locked, foot-locked unit. Well, his bases are actually pretty damn good, because they're based off Astolfo. Astolfo has really good personal bases. It's just his stats aren't that high because he's a thief. But if you transform him into any other class, he actually has a very high base level of 10. You actually get a very good unit. I mean, the Lord class does not have good stats at all. And look at these Nots' stats. 7 base strength, 12 base speed is pretty good for this state, st stage of the game. And 10 base defense is also very good. 27 HP, 10 base defense. This is a tanky unit. And trust me, in this run, it's good to have some tanky units. Yeah, sure, he can't attack at range. Sure, he's footlocked and he kind of has a bad promotion. I mean, he can promote with both a knight and a hero crest. We made it so that he can promote with those two. Uh, and while he has good promo gains, he still just turns into a bad swordmaster without a crit bonus. But the reason why I rate Dias not so highly is because he's the only character in the game that can use the Binding Blade. You won't get another Lord or a Master Lord. And you actually need the Binding Blade to kill the last boss of the game. I'm going to spoil who the last boss is if you haven't watched the stream, if you want to play this run for yourself. But uh, the last boss is way harder than i done. Like, the last boss is insane. There are only two characters that can even scratch the last boss. It's the, uh, the it's the Asnot and the Far Replacement. So if you want to actually get the best ending, you need to train the Asnot. He's actually essential. But it's not like he's only good for the last stage of the game. Uh, he, I found him useful throughout the entire game. Just, just because of his innate tankiness. Like, he was just incredibly nice to have a unit that didn't die. I could put him in front of dangerous units. And while he wouldn't necessarily kill everything, he could certainly tank it, and that was kind of nice in Binding Blade, because they're very strong enemies in this game. And yeah, he'll grow really well. Decent growth rates in all areas. 50% defense growth is very good. He's got a cap defense, and as a Master Lord, he'll be insanely tanky. He'll be a little bit weak to magic, but because of his high speed, he won't usually be doubled, so you give him a barrier staff, he'll be fine. It's actually a surprisingly good unit. And then we come to the Lilina replacement, Full Mine. And uh, one look at this unit. Oh boy, she is squishy. 14 base HP. This is not a fun unit to train. I tried. I failed. Uh, but yeah, you got to keep her alive if you want the Guidance Chapters to keep this in mind. But yeah, look. I mean, just look at her growth rates. 80% strength, 70% speed. And she has like... 39 levels to grow? Yeah, if you train up this unit, you're gonna get a Falconite that is gonna cap strength, skill, and speed. And she's gonna absolutely murder everything. Sadly, however, with the 40% HP growth, she's gonna be, re remain eternally squishy. So she will need a lot of uh, help. Uh, I, th I think at some point her avoidance will become so good that she can pretty much dodge everything. Uh, Arrows will always pose a threat to her though, so you need to be careful with that. You need a Delphi shield later on if you want to keep her around. But she has pretty good potential. I'd say she's probably like a three-star unit. I, a little bit uncertain, three or four stars. It kind of depends on how much you're willing to train her up. I think the tedious training process is incredibly annoying. Uh, she has five con, which means she gets slowed down by pretty much every lance in the game. So she's not going to double everything for quite a while. But I think once you get her up there, she's going to become very decent. She, 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 she very much is like Lalina, like a unit that's very tough to train, but has a lot of potential when trained. But I still don't think she's like insanely good. There are definitely better flyers in this game. And then we come to the Ostian Scrub Squad, starting with the Barth replacement, Milkers the Vibrant Knight. This is an easy five-star unit, incredibly strong. Uh, she does have some glaring weaknesses, really low luck and skill for one, the creator gave her a skill bane sadly. If you hadn't done that, she'd be so incredibly good. 12 con is very strong, allows her to use most lances without being slowed down. 13 base strength and 10 base speed is incredible. Barth has ridiculously good personal bases, his class is just really bad. So once he becomes an actual good class like a Vyvern Rider, you can see just how strong he is as a unit. Really solid growth rates overall, 60% strength, 40% skill, 60% speed, that's incredibly strong. 45% defense, Milkers is probably going to end up capping her defense. Uh, I used her, sadly she did die to a low percentage crit because of her atrocious bad luck. But a couple of goddess icons should be able to remedy this, I definitely think she needs them. 
Uh, but she can also get a, a crit boost or crit avoid boosting support, and I think she'll be just fine. Uh, incredibly good unit. Once you promote her to Vibrant Lord and she can use swords, she's going to become so useful in dealing with axe users. So yeah, one of the best units in the game for sure. And then we come to the OJ replacement, FBI agents. And yeah, not a terrific unit right here. I mean, he's incredibly fast. With an 80% speed growth, he's going to cap speed uh, for sure. But there's another Cavalier that already does that in coin. Now, if you, if you didn't train coin or if you lost turn, then I think FBI agent is a perfectly okay replacement unit. But yeah, I think his stats leave a little bit to be desired. He is uh, based on OJ after all. 10 base strength and 6 base speed is not fantastic. He's not going to double anything for quite a while. 8 con is just low enough to the point where he gets slowed down by a lot of good weapons like the Steel Sword and Lances and stuff like that. Uh, not to mention Javelins. So yeah, I, I, I think this unit is pretty tricky to use. I'm still going to rate him 3 stars because the Cavalier is such a strong class and he does have some good potential. And 18 or 17 8 is also pretty damn good. He can rescue pretty much anyone, uh, but not a great unit overall. I think he's, he's tough to use. His base level is a little bit too low at this stage of the game too, but that doesn't mean he will gain experience faster though, so that will make him a little bit easier to train. So depending on what you're looking for, he can serve as a perfectly okay replacement unit, but that's really all he is in my opinion. Then we come to Thick Daddy, the Gwendolyn <laughs> replacement. And I will say the one way you make Gwendolyn viable is to turn her into a healer. And this, for this reason, like, I think this is probably the best thing we like that could have happened to her. I don't see her working out as any other class. Maybe like a growth-based Myrmidon. I, I still think it's incredibly hard, though. Yeah, one base magic is atrocious. Uh, he doesn't have skill at all. Zero base skill and zero percent skill growth. That being said, he doesn't really need skill to heal, but if you actually want to fight with him as a Valkyrie, that's going to become incredibly hard. Like, sure, anima spells have very high hit rates, but with zero skill and zero skill growth, you are actually going to miss quite a bit. So yeah, he, he has like only speed, luck, and defense. That's pretty much the only good stats he has. Which I understand, like, the, the creator didn't do a bad job trying to turn Gwendolyn into a decent healer, but I still don't think Thick Daddy is very good. He's a two-star unit. He's a replacement healer. That's pretty much what he is. There are much better healers in this game. There's a um, Troubadour that joins much later, which is far better than Tick Daddy, that actually has some combat potential as well. But again, you know, replacement healer. It's nice if you happen to have lost your other ones. And that's pretty much all I can say about him. Up next, we come to the fear replacement, Leon. And Leon is a very unique unit. Uh, he actually has a personal weapon. He comes with a bow gun. This is because fear comes with a Wudao. And there is no bow equivalent of the Wudao, so we actually created the bow gun, which is a bow that has the stats of the Wudao. However, it is locked to Leon as a personal weapon. He cannot trade it away, and it only has 20 uses. But it is kind of nice, you know, it's very good for him to get kills early on. Only weighs 5, so it doesn't slow him down. Although, funnily enough, Leon's constitution is insanely good, because I think the creator gave him a con boon. So that gives him, like, plus 4 extra con. So he can actually use steel bows at base without losing any speed, which is kind of nice. And being a level 1 archer with 10 base strength and 5 base speed, he's not going to double right away, but he has a very good speed growth of 50%. So if you train him, which is quite easy to do in this chapter, especially with the bow gun, which crits a lot, uh, you can level him up pretty fast. And as a result, you'll end up getting a archer with a lot of strength. you got to be a little bit lucky with the speed. I know his speed uh, level ups are pretty much a coin flip, whether he gets speed or not, but once he starts getting up to a level where he'll double, he'll actually kill pretty much everything in one turn. And if you can get him up to a sniper, he'll be absolutely insane. So for that reason alone, even though he is an archer, I'm going to rate him 3 out of 5 stars, because having a strong sniper in this game is actually insanely useful. Binding Blade is a unit with, or Binding Blade is a game with very strong units, and having a very strong sniper is incredibly nice. There are some late game pre-promoted snipers joining in this ROM as well, but they're quite a ways off. And having Leon, I remember I was very happy to train him, like it was it was very easy, it was very fun, just like Fear. And I, the, the result was actually pretty nice. So, yeah, no, he's, a, he's a decent archer. Very good potential on this guy. Then we come to the Shin replacement, Kaga. And this might just be one of the best units in the ROM, I think. Five stars, easily. 
Uh, he's absolutely incredible. He's only level 5 with those stats, which means that training him is an absolute breeze. He'll get so much experience from uh, killing units. He comes with the Kaga Sword. This is just a renamed Al Sword. There's nothing special to it. You can even trade it away. It's not locked to him at all. It's, it's just like an Iron Sword with a little bit more might. It's like, a, it's like a middle ground between an Iron and a Steel Sword. It's not really that unique, but he does have a lot of durability, so that's fun, I guess. Uh, but yeah, Kaga is easily one of the best combat units in the entire game. With 11 strength and 15 speed, he'll double everything in this champion. Chapter. This is also a chapter full of axe users, so it's so easy to level Kaga. Like, you can train him on the pirate reinforcements, and you can easily get him up to, like, level 18, level 19. I think you can probably even promote him in this chapter if you really go hard on it. And Kaga's growth rates are really good. You know, they're also very well balanced for his stats. You know, he's a very high strength growth of 60%, which is which combines very nicely with the fact that strength is his lowest stat from uh, based on skill and speed. And then he has a 40% skill and a speed growth, which is just enough to get him up to like 20 in those three areas uh, long before he promotes. And a 50% defense growth is also insanely nice. He's going to level defense like every other level, and he's going to become in incredibly tanky. His rest may not be fantastic. A lot of people joked around saying like, oh, it's Kaga, he should have zero rest. But it doesn't really matter because he's going to have so much hit points anyway. Once he promotes to hero, he's not really going to be that scared of magic users. Sure, they're going to kill him. Like, he can't take on like three mages at once. They're going to kill him. Uh, but that goes for pretty much every other unit in this game. Like, rest is just in very low supply in FE6. But Kaga can pretty much kill everything else. He's absolutely insane. By the time I ended up promoting him to hero, he like most of his stats were like above 20. It was absolutely insane. So yeah, very, very strong unit. EC5 stars, one of the best fighting units in the entire ROM. Super easy to train and fun to use. Up next, we come to the Geese replacement, Blaze the Mage. And uh, yeah, he's actually pretty damn good because he too has a personal weapon in the Dire Thunder. Now, why did we give him Dire Thunder? Well, it's quite simple. I wanted the characters in the ROM to roughly replace the characters that they were replacing in terms of pure power level. And it turns out that Geese actually comes with one of the only obtainable Brave Axes in the game. Now, there is no Brave Animatome, which means that by losing out on Geese, you also lose out on a Brave weapon. So I was like, okay, let's make a Brave Animatome. Now, Initially, I was actually going to give it the exact same stats as the Brave Axe, which means it wouldn't have been very good. But chat whined and cried. I was like, oh, make it a little bit better. It's an Animatome. So I, I upped its hit to 69 and lowered its weight to 8 because I'm soft like that. But um, Blaze is the only one who can use the Dire Thunder. It is locked to him as a personal tome. He cannot trade it away. And it only has 30 uses, so it's not going to last him for very long. But it's still pretty nice. I mean, it makes him... Makes feeding him kills pretty easy. His hit rates are going to be a little shaky with it, but he's still going to be able to kill a lot of stuff with it. And, you know, you can save it, you can hammer it uh, for when he becomes a sage, and you can kick a lot of ass with this tome. Uh, as for his stats, they're not very good because they're based on Geese, obviously. Geese has very poor personal basis, and they're no better as a mage. Uh, but his growth rates are decent in most areas. 60% like magic, 55% speed. It's, it's, it's all good. He's a little frail at 15% defense, but it's nothing terrible. He does have 6 base defense, which is actually pretty high for a mage. So this is a solid unit. 4 out of 5 stars. You train him up to a sage, he's going to become really strong. Uh, his base speed is a little low, but he has a good base, base speed growth, so, you know, you train him up, he's gonna be decent. This, this is a very strong mage. The personal tome also, like, bumps him up quite a bit. And sages are just overall really strong in Binding Blade. And up next, we have the Gonzales replacement, Nell the Troubadour, or I guess we renamed them to TikTok Nurse, but yeah, she's a Troubadour. And this unit actually has incredible potential. I really like this unit a lot. Uh, growth rate-wise, she does seem like a little bit of a meme. She has no HP or magic. She levels pretty much only skill and speed, and she has a 130% luck growth, which is a little bit overkill. Probably could have gone a little bit lower on this one. And she will never level defense and resistance. However, because she inherits Gonzalez basis, her base magic and base speed is absolutely incredible. And she also comes with a very respectable 35 base HP, which is insane for a level... 5 Troubadour. Like, she might not grow HP much on her own, but I never had any issues keeping Nell alive. And because she will level up speed and luck like crazy, she's gonna cap both stats and become completely unhittable. In, fine, in fact, I found that this unit worked very similarly to Clarine. 
Uh, it's just a Valkyrie that never gets hit. Doesn't matter if you don't have defense when enemies have like a 0% chance to hit you. And while a 10% magic world seems bad on paper, her Valkyrie promo promotion gains actually meant that she was able to do her job just fine. I think my Nell had like 15 or 16 magic in the late game, which is completely okay. Enemies in Binding Blade don't have resistance, it, so it doesn't really matter. And she's able to heal just fine. And she's unhittable, like practically unhittable. It's actually incredible. So I actually think Nell is a 4 out of 5 star unit. She's incredibly strong. She ended up being one of my main healers. Uh, very, very good unit. And then we come to the Larum replacement, Bartha. And this is the ROM's first super growth unit, meaning that we actually uh, doubled the unit's growth rates. Reason why we did this was because this unit replaces Larum, which means that its basis and level would be absolute trash. Uh, dancers don't have very good basis at all uh, because, you know, they're dancers, so they don't need basis. But for a unit who goes from a dancer to a normal class, we felt like we had to give it something to make it viable, and so we decided to make a super growth unit. Sadly, this turned into Bartha, one of the worst units in the entire ROM. One out of five stars. Oof, I don't give a shit how, how much you think she's viable. She's not, okay? Make a goddamn video explaining why I'm wrong if you want to, but this, this unit is trash. Okay, so she only levels HP, Strength, uh, Luck, and Defense. That's pretty much the only stat she'll level. Every other stat will be stuck at zero. She won't have skill, she won't have speed, and she won't have res. Aside from the res she already has. This means that she's pretty much only a wall. She's gonna cap HP, Strength, Luck, and Defense. That's all she's gonna do. She, she'll be a wall. She can't hit things. She can't double things. She is a portable light room. Some people might like that, but I don't think tanks that can't kill things will ever work in FE6. Like, you need to kill things. You can't just tank them. It's nice to have tanky units, don't get me wrong, but only if they can dish out a little bit of damage themselves. Bartha cannot. Even if you promote her to general, she still won't be able to do shit, because with zero skill, she won't hit stuff. Like, maybe if you give her good support, she does have the ice affinity, which grants hit, but then you're reliant on having another unit walk around with Bartha. Yeah, I, I, this unit is complete trash. I don't care how much you love Armor Knights, this unit has no potential in my mind. But I don't know, maybe, maybe someone will prove me wrong. And then we come to the Klein replacement, Brandy. And Brandy is easily one of the most busted units in the entire realm. Easy five stars. Like, if you don't get her killed like I did on a killer lance in this stupid chapter, she is probably your best unit. Uh, like, this unit is absolutely incredible. Now, one of the reasons why she doesn't have halved growth rates is because Klein in vanilla FE6 actually has very decent growth rates. He's one of the few pre-promoted units that actually has a growth rate total equaling the other non-promoted units in the game. I don't really know why they did that with Klein. I guess they just, because they wanted him to be special because he's an Aturian general or like a candidate for an Aturian general, I think. So, uh, for that reason alone, I was like, well, we're not going to halve her growth rates. And... I didn't realize just how busted this would make her. Like, her basis alone makes her incredible. 20 base magic is absolutely incredible. This is like getting a Nime in the early game. Now, her staff rank is not as good as Nime. I do believe she only has E rank and staves. Can't see it right here with the green units, but if I remember correctly, I think she has A rank in dark and, like, E rank in staves. So, she's no Nime in terms of, like, she got warped from the start. Like, you need to train her, her staff rank up, but... She's still incredible. 20 base magic is ridiculous. And she will grow very well as well. Like 60% magic, 75% speed. She's going to cap magic and speed very easily. This is why you don't really need to train no Hime. Like you can just use Brandy. She'll turn out better. Now she does have some glaring weaknesses. It's not like she's the perfect unit. 3 con is atrocious. And keep in mind, this is a promoted unit. I think I think she got a con bane. This means that Flux and Osferatu Tomes actually will weigh her down a little. But it's not a big deal, as a tome weight in, is very low in Binding Blade. Uh, but per perhaps one of her biggest weaknesses is the fact that she has a 5 defense base and a 10% defense growth. So she's squishy, she relies on her avoidance to keep her alive. This means Nosferatu tanking is very risky with Brandy, and this is exactly what I did that got her killed. I put her in front of a bunch of Cavaliers, I thought maybe she'd be able to Nos tank them, she didn't. So she does need some training before she can reliably Nos tank, but just with a Flux Tome, she can pretty much kill anything. Like, she can one round promoted units with a Flux Tome, I'm pretty sure at this stage. So yeah, one of the most busted units in the ROM for sure. If I hadn't lost her, she'd probably be one of my staple units. And then we come to the Thea replacement, Bethany. 
the mage. And because she replaces Tia, she gets hard mode bonuses. Uh, and I am showing the ROM on hard mode, by the way, in case you were wondering. So if you're playing on normal mode, her stats are going to be a little lower. But Bethany is incredible in hard mode. 13 base speed is ridiculous. She's going to double pretty much everything. And her speed will only uh, continue to increase because she has a 60% speed growth. And she has a 60% magic growth as well. So if you keep training Bethany, you're going to get a Sage that will pretty much cap magic and speed. Her skill is a little low at 30%, but animatomes are so accurate anyway that it doesn't really matter. And she also has a ton of really good support options. Like, for example, I supported her up with Coin in my run. And they ended up be kicking all sorts of ass together. I think they were probably my strongest duo. So, Bethany is incredible. Four out of five stars. I'm not going to completely rate her five stars because you do need some training to get her up. And I think there are other units that are just a little bit better than her. But she's like a strong four star. If I did half ratings, I'd probably rate her like four and a half stars out of five. She is one of the best units in the ROM. Uh, tons of potential, really easy to train, really strong bases. Having a mage with really high base speed is always nice, because when you double as a mage, it's just so easy to get kills, because enemies in Binding Blade just do not have resistance. So just armed with a Fire Tome, she can easily deal like 15 damage plus times two. It's it's incredible. And again, you, you, you train her up, you give her a good supporting partner, she's going to be one of your best sages. Up next, we have the Echidna replacement, Natalie. As you can see, she almost died on the turn she came out, which is something Echidna also had a tendency of doing. Uh, you will only get Natalie if you go the B route, just keep this in mind. Uh, Natalie is a Paladin, and a pretty damn good one of that. I rate her 4 out of 5 stars. Uh, she has incredibly good bases, as you might expect from a unit replacing Echidna. 15 base strength, 15 base skill, and 18 base speed is ridiculous. Like, Natalie's gonna double everything and deal a hefty amount of damage in the process. Uh, her defenses will never go anywhere on their own. She has a 0% defense and resistance growth, which is gonna make her a little squishy. But she has very, very, very strong HP growth at 100%. Now, this was actually pretty smart, because in this ROM, pre-promotes did not have their HP growth halved. So the creator put a lot of effort into her HP, which means that it's going to rise every single level. So if you train Natalie up, she's going to get 20 extra hit points at level 20, or 19 extra, I guess you could say. And that's going to actually do a lot for her survivability. Sure, her defense and rest will stay where they are, but her high speed should allow her to avoid most incoming attacks anyway. So, Natalie is a pretty damn strong unit. She also has very good weapon ranks. You can't see them right here. She also comes with a poison axe for lols. Uh, but I think she has A rank in axes, C rank in lances, and D rank in sword? I don't remember exactly, but her, her weapon ranks are pretty damn good. It's a, it's a shame you can't see them on the green units, but yeah, no, she's very, very good. Uh, Paladins are just incredibly strong in this game, and she's a Paladin you just get for free with no no investment. Lo base luck is a little low, though. I will say, 6 base luck is a little bit on the low side. She does risk getting some crits, so you need to be a little bit cautious with her. But it shouldn't be too big of a deal. And then it's time to show off the units in the A route, starting with the Elfin replacement, Angel. And Angel is the second growth unit in the game, uh, next to Bartha. And unlike Bartha, this unit is absolutely busted. Doubling growth rates on a pirate means you're gonna get a Berserker that pretty much caps every single stat. So I can't rate this guy anything below 5 stars. Like, yeah sure, it's a little bit of a hassle to train him. A level 1 pirate at this stage of the game will require some babying. But if you go through that process, you're gonna get a Berserker that can probably solo the game. Like, I, I can't imagine this guy not being anything but busted. I never got a chance to use him in my run because I didn't go the A route. But anyone who trains this guy, I'm like, every, every single level up, he's gonna get one in every stat. He's absolutely incredible. He's gonna be like Karel, pretty much. So yeah, I, I like, sure, it takes him a little while to get there, but a Berserker with every single stat capped in the late game, yeah, that can't be anything below a 5 star. Like, that's just incredible. And then we come to the Bartra replacement, Rachel, the Nomad Trooper. And I will say, I was very curious to see what was going to happen to Bartra. And this is actually not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible either. Uh, she comes with a Brave Bow, because Bartra usually comes with a Brave Axe. So she can deal a lot of damage. But sadly, you know, being a unit based off Bartra's basis means you're gonna have very shaky skills and speed. And, you know, having your growth rates halved, that also means that her stats are not gonna go that much up on their own. I mean, 30% speed growth is not terrible, though. That's certainly, like, you will be able to get your speed up a little bit. And if you give her a speed wing, you could arguably make her pretty good. I mean, 22 base strength as a Nomad Trooper is insane. Like, she hits incredibly hard. She is one point away from capping the stat. So, it's not like she she's not a, a 
good unit. I, she's kind of just average, I think. I, I would rate her 3 out of 5 stars, which is more than I would rate Bartra. So it's definitely an improvement over Bartra. But I think the Shaky skill will make this unit a little bit hard to use. Bows do have decent hit rates, though. So it's not like she won't be able to hit things. But I think her speed is just low enough to the point where she won't reliably double. And that is a problem when you're playing a Nomad Trooper. She can use Swords, though. So she can fight Axe users pretty decently. Um, so there's that. She does have that potential. I never used her myself, so I'm not entirely sure how well she performs. But looking at these stats, I can't imagine she's incredibly good. Up next, we come to the Ray replacement, Angelica. She's Angelina's sister, and a, an attempt for chat to give Jump another waifu, which uh, didn't go so well. Uh, she has a couple of glaring issues. Uh, her con is very low, her luck is very low, and her HP are also very low, because she's based off a very squishy, frail magic user. However, her base strength and speed are just incredible. 16 base strength is really good for a Pegasus Knight. And 12 speed is enough to double some units. She's gonna get slowed down a little bit by her low con, but once her speed gets going, which she, it will because she has a 60% speed growth, she will start to double and deal terrific damage. The only problem is uh, she she has a 0% luck growth. And again, this I, I think this really hampers her usefulness. I would probably have rated her four stars if she had a luck stat and a luck growth. But, because she doesn't have luck, I'm gonna rate her 2 out of 5 stars. Now, some people may think this is incredibly harsh. Like, oh, Mengs, you're overvaluing the luck stat. No, seriously. 2 base luck and 0% luck growth means that she will always face crit, no matter what. She's gonna face like 4-5 to five crit rates from any generic enemy she goes up against. Mercenaries, like, any unit with a modicum of skill will have a chance to crit her. So, you're gonna get crit, and she's gonna die. It's gonna happen. And for that reason, I find her incredibly hard to use. Now, you may meme on this. Oh, Meng's uh, punishing like 2 out of 5 stars for no luck. Oh, luck is the best stuff, blah, 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 blah. But seriously, when every single unit you go up against have crit against you, you become incredibly hard to use. Now, sure, you can attack with javelins from a distance. And they slow her down quite a lot. You can, again, you can give her goddess icons. There's not that many goddess icons in the game, though. So good luck with that. But this could have been fixed so easily by just taking a little bit away from her other growth rates and just giving her like a 30 or 40% luck growth. And that would have been fine. Or even better, you could have given her a luck boon instead of a strength boon. Sure, it would have lowered her damage output a little bit, but man, it would have made her so much easier to use. So because she doesn't have luck, I find her incredibly hard to use. But I guess she's still a flyer. You can use her. 6-8 six to eight is pretty good, but... Yeah, no. This, this is... I don't, I don't like this unit. Stop making units with low luck. Seriously. Ah! And then we come to the Cath replacement, Carl. If you talk to Carl in the two previous maps that he showed up, this will be the first chapter where you can recruit him. However, if you don't recruit him, you can actually wait all the way until the Cephiel chapter, and his stats will actually go up with every chapter you wait, because his hard mode bonuses will increase. Uh, I think I waited until the Ilya chapter, like the in-game, uh, the indoor castle Ilya chapter before I recruited him, and as a result, his stats actually ended up being like two to three points higher in every area. Not really worth it, but you can do it. Uh, Carl's a 5-star unit. He is incredibly strong. Uh, he starts out level 5 with these stats. Like, look at those stats. 12 in every area. Now, of course, this is hard mode. If you play on normal mode, they'll be a little bit lower. And if you also, if you play on normal mode, there's also no reason to wait to recruit him, because on normal mode, his stats don't go up uh, And uh, if you wait. But just look at those stats. Holy shit, they're so strong. Like, 12 in every single area. Like, his rest is slow, but that goes for every unit in FE6. And 14 con! That's incredible! He can use Steel Lances without losing speed. And all of his growth rates are really strong. You know, like, he has balanced growth rates in every area. Uh, and, and as I said, because he's level 5, training him up is a breeze. He's gonna get so much experience for killing units. Like, his levels are just gonna shoot up. You don't even need to promote him at level 20. Like, he's probably gonna cap most of his stats by the time he reaches level 15. And you can just promote him then. And you'll get a Vyvern Lord, which just has, like, 20 plus in every single stat except for S. It's absolutely incredible. This is, like, the Milady of the Romp. It, like, this, this is an incredibly strong unit. You should definitely train him. Up next, we have the Melody replacement Bomber, the Cavalier, and uh, obviously being based on Melody means your stats are going to be ridiculous. Now, she doesn't fly like Melody does, but she is still incredibly strong. I would rate Bomber a 4 out of 5-star unit. Nearly 5 stars. Nearly 5 stars. But I think that at this point during the game, there are a lot of other good units to train. I actually ended up benching her because I had so many other good units in my roster. But Bomber is incredible. I mean, 15 base strength, 
13 base speed, 13 base defense. And those are incredible stats. Uh, she, if you promote her to Paladin, she's probably going to cap every single stat, except for Luck and Resistance. This is a very strong unit. I would have rated her 5 stars if she joined a little earlier. Uh, yeah, just I, I, there's nothing really much to, else to say about this unit. It's just an overall solid, good unit. Train her, and you're not going to be disappointed. I didn't end up using her. I probably should have, though. Looking at these stats, they're absolutely incredible. But yeah, probably one of the better units in the ROM. Up next is the Sophia replacement, and I gotta admit, I, I caved to chat here. Originally, we were not going to make this a super growth unit, but chat kept whining and complaining, and they were like, come on, it's Sophia, we gotta make her good. So I reluctantly agreed to make her a super growth unit, which means her growth rates got doubled, and so we have Cassiel the Cleric. And while she is based off a, a Sophia's atrocious basis, she does have some of the best growths in the game. And she's not hard to train. Uh, she comes with a torch staff in her inventory. It's another like thing that Chat wanted to give her, which means she's going to be able quite easy to level on this map because she could just spam torch ten times and get a lot of experience that way. Uh, she also comes with C rank and staves, which is pretty nice. So she can use men staves off the bat along with restore staves. Uh, so even though her bases are really bad, because she has some of the best growth rates in the game, I'm going to rate her 4 out of 5 stars. Uh, once you promote her to Bishop, she's pretty much going to cap every single stat except for defense. And while Light Magic has really bad combat stats in Binding Blade, like she's not going to be your best fighter, not by a long shot. And training her up to Aurora level is going to take forever. You can do it. I think I was able to get her up to like C rank in Light Magic by the end game, and I fought with her quite a bit. So it's going to take you a very long time to do. But if you train her up to wield the Aurora, Aurora, I hate this tome's name. <laughs> She's probably going to be able to like one shot everything with it. Uh, and as a result, she is one of the better units in the game. Fantastic staff utility, just really good stats overall once she starts leveling up. And, you know, I, like, she's very satisfying to use, because every time you level her up, she's pretty much going to get one in every stat. Her defense is like the only stat that's a little bit low. And of course, you have to baby the hell out of her, because if she comes within range of an enemy, she will die. But being a staff user, this is not really that hard to pull off, because staff users can just be hidden behind the rest of your army. And especially in this chapter, all she needs to do is go around and spam torch, which will help you out in this chapter because it's a fog of war chapter so she contributes and she also comes with a restore staff in her inventory so she can go around and cure status staves so again like she starts off incredibly useful so just an overall really solid unit i do feel a little bit bad for making her a super growth unit i feel like she shouldn't have been uh but again chat just kept whining and i'm, I'm weak i guess so yeah and then we come to the Cecilia replacement, Finor the General. And I was excited for this one because I think if we had made Cecilia anything else than a Valkyrie, like a bishop, for example, would have been really good on this map. Just anything but a Valkyrie. And then I did a poll because I'm stupid and chat trolled me and Finor became a general. So that's just wonderful. Now, because we took pity on Cecilia, we didn't halve her growth rates because she's so bad. Uh, so... What we got was a unit that I actually wanted to train, but I didn't like. I didn't have any illusions that be, this would be a fantastic unit or anything. Uh, his uh, he does come with some decent uh, equipment, a brave axe and an axe weaver, as well as some pretty good weapon ranks, like A rank in axes, C rank in lances. It's pretty good, but his bases are not that great. 16 defense is nice, 15 strength is okay, but Cecilia just has such atrocious base skill and speed. Uh, so. While Finor can actually fight decently on this map, like his Axe Reaver can be used against the Brigands. I do believe I got him killed to, uh, due to a Killer Axe though, if I remember correctly. I do think yeah, I lost him in this chapter. But because his growth rates are okay, if you train him, he will probably turn into something half decent. But I'm still going to rate him 2 out of 5 stars. I don't think he's very good. And on this chapter, he's also incredibly hard to use because he moves like one space. So just, he has a very rough start. But if you keep bringing him for the chapters to come, I do think you might be able to train him into something half decent. But because experience gains are so slow for promoted units and Binding Blade, this is going to take ages to do. So I don't really think he's very good. But yeah, good attempt at making Cecilia good in general, I guess. And up next, we come to the Igren replacement, Rohan. And this unit was so close to greatness. I think this could have been one of the best uh, pre-promotes in the entire ROM, because he's Halberdier, and Halberdiers are absolutely busted. Uh, he gets the 30% crit boost and everything. 
but sadly, the creator and his uh, infinite wisdom decided to give him a speed bane for some reason. So his base speed went from 13 down to 11. And this is actually huge, because I do believe this hits a lot of crucial benchmarks in this chapter. With 13 base speed, you're gonna double some unpromoted units, and that's gonna make it all very easy for Rohan to get kills. 11 speed, though, you're not gonna double. In fact, you might even get doubled by some of the faster units on this map, like the Valkyries. So that's gonna make him very tough to use. Still, despite this setback, Rohan is a pretty solid pre-promote. Halberdier is just such a good class. Uh, he has incredible defenses, like 39 HP, 15 base defense, 13 base rest. He is incredibly bulky. He can take a lot of punishment. And 16 base strength and 18 base skill is also incredible. Like, he's gonna have, with the Killer Lance, he's gonna have like 60 to 70% crit against everything. And he does come with the Killer Lance at base in his inventory too. So he can just straight up one-shot things. So he actually ended up being a lot better than I thought he would be, but he would have been so much better if he had 13 base speed. I'm gonna rate him four out of five stars. I think I would have rated him five stars if he had 13 base speed. That's how good I think he is. Uh, but four stars, just because, again, halberdiers are busted. He tanks everything, he crits like half of his attacks, or more than half of his attacks, like two thirds of his attacks. Because again, with a kill lance, his crit rates are in the 60 to 70%. That's how much crit he has. So you can just go around one-shotting things. So very strong. He's like, if Garrett was a good class, like that's, that's him basically. If Garrett had good survivability and was a good class, he would be Rohan. So, and you guys know I like my Garrett, so. Yeah, so he's a pretty solid pre-promote. And up next, we have the long-awaited Percival replacement, Nagatoro. And yeah, I'm not, there's, there's no suspense on this one. This is an easy five-star unit. I think it's impossible to make Percival anything but a five-star unit, unless you make him a dancer or something like that. Actually, no, he would still be a five-star unit, because he'd be a dancer. But it would be a waste of stats, though. So Percival has ridiculous stats. No matter which class you turn him into. Actually, you know what? If you turn him into a general, maybe it wouldn't have been five stars, because generals are kind of trash. Sorry, oof. sorry, Donlot, but... Actually, you know what? No, a, a general with these stats would probably be a five-star unit still. I take that back. Actually, I take that back. A gen Percival would be amazing as a general as well. I don't think there's a single class he wouldn't be a five-star unit as. Uh, but this is Nagatoro, a Swordmaster, and I really like what the creator did here. It's a pretty big brain move. 0% uh, in every single growth rate, except for speed and defense. So 50% speed, 100% defense. This means Nagatoro is always guaranteed to get defense on every single level up, which means she's going to get 15, or sorry, 14 points of defense if you train her all the way up to level 20. And she's going to get defense or speed 50% of the time, so she's going to cap it at 30. Her other stats are good enough. They don't need to increase. So I actually think the, the creator did a very smart thing, leaving them at 0%. 21 base strength is completely fine. That's going to carry you, you throughout the entire game. You don't need more than that. 24 skill is also completely fine. You don't need more than 24. It's absolutely fine. 15 luck and 12 resistance is also decent. 46 HP is completely fine. So yeah, Nagatoru is just going to be a unit that can delete anything you throw her at. As a sword master, she'll just kill everything. So for some reason, I had very bad luck with Nagatoru. She almost never critted, even though I used like killing edges and stuff. I don't really know why. I guess she didn't like bullying anyone but Senpai, but yeah. So, but a three con is a little bit atrocious too. Like, I, I think the creator gave her a con bane for memes because she's Nagatoro and she's tiny. But that does actually like hamper her a little bit. But she's still gonna double everything. So it's not really that big a deal at the end of the day. And then we come to the Garrett replacement, Helena, which actually ended up being a sniper. And Helena is a very RNG dependent character, at least on hard mode, because her hard mode bonuses can pretty much dictate whether she becomes useful or not. This Helena has been very lucky and rolled 15 speed. I do believe my Helena got 13 or 12. I remember I I remember being very disappointed with the speed of my Helena. And the difference between having 12 speed or 15 speed is absolutely huge, because it means uh, this Helena, I'm pretty sure, will be able to double most of the Vyvern Knights in this chapter, whereas my Helena could not. I had to give my Helena a speed wing, and even then she wasn't really able to double. Like, her stats are not going to go uh, anywhere on their own because they're very low. Or, sorry, her, her growth rates are very low, so her stats are not going to increase that much on her own. But a sniper with 52 HP and 19 strength is actually incredible. Now, my Helena, I was very disappointed with her. I would rate, like, the, the Helena in my ROM had, like, 12 speeds. So I would rate her 2 out of 5 stars. But this Helena, I would rate an EC3 or maybe even 4 stars. I'm tempted to rate 4 stars, but I think I'm going to end up being uh, rating her 3 stars. Because at the end of the day, um, there are so many other better units, and she joins quite late. She's very durable, 
she's very hard to kill, which is kind of nice as a sniper, honestly. Like, having a sniper that you're not worried about, like, one of the things I kind of hate about Igren in FE6 is that she's quite frail. Like, she can die quite easily, especially in the later chapters, but this unit will not die. Like, she will, she can take a pounding, quite literally, and she'll hit very hard with her, her, uh, her attacks as well. Uh, but again, it kind of depends on your hard mode bonuses. If you're lucky and you roll high, she can be very good. If you're lucky, or if you're unlucky and you roll low on the speed, she can be quite bad. So her rating will kind of vary depending on that. But I think I'll settle on a, on a, on a, on a three, 3 out of 5. I think that's a good rating to give her as a unit. And then it's time for the Fa replacement. And for simplicity's sake, we decided to keep her class. So, <laughs> say hello to Shrek. Ah, uh, Shrek. Oh, what a unit. So, Shrek replaces Fa, and uh, he works pretty much the same way she did. However, we decided to make a bit of a, a bit of an adjustment to him, because one of the things I think is very frustrating with Fa is how her Divine Stone only has 30 uses. So we decided to give Shrek the Onion, which is basically the Divine Stone, but we decided to double its uses. However, we decided to give him normal growth rates. Now, Fa has incredible growth rates. So if we were to make her as a unit, we'd probably have to make her a super growth unit. But I decided, okay, what we're going to have here is we're going to have a Mana Keat that has more attacks and can be used longer, but with normal growth rates. And the result was Shrek. So he has completely normal growth rates. I like how the creator gave him a 1% rest growth because he doesn't need it. The Divine Stone gives an insane plus 20 uh, res resistance. So he is never going to take any damage from magical attacks. So he doesn't need a rest growth. But every, every, every other one of his growths are pretty good. Uh, he has good strength, good skill, good speed. And the Divine Stone is effective against Mana Keats, which is incredibly good, because Mana Keats have 1-2 range in this ROM. Thanks a lot, Dee's Noon. Yeah, so have fun with that. You will definitely need to train Shrek. Uh, he's a 5-star unit. Uh, you need him to take on the Mana Keats, because they're incredibly powerful in this ROM. And you need him if you want to fight the final boss. Uh, Dee's Not will probably not be able to kill the final boss on his own. He'll need some help from Shrek. For that reason alone, I think he's one of the best units in the game. He's also insanely good at soaking Siege Tomes, because he gets doubled by them. But because of his insane high res, he can drain two Siege Tome uses per chapter. Particularly in this map right here, there's like a Perch Bishop and a Bolting Mage, and you can drain both of them with Shrek. So he is just incredibly useful in that regard. Uh, very, very, very good unit. You should definitely train him. And up next, we come to the Hue replacement, Cassandra. And one of the last waifus jump can get if you killed off all the other ones. Uh, she will cost you 10,000 to recruit if you want her best stats, which is not fantastic. Uh, 10,000 is a big investment for a unit. But if you don't have money troubles, you should definitely go and get her because she is quite good. Uh, her strength, skill, and speed are all very, very high. And her growth rates are also very solid in all areas. She will promote to a female hero, by the way, not a warrior. This is important to note. We didn't have class slots left to implement female warriors into the ROM. So she'll promote to a hero and her promo gains will actually... I think she'll actually lose a point of con when doing so, which is kind of funny. Uh, but all of her other stats are incredibly good. And once she becomes a hero, she'll pretty much kill everything. Uh, very, very strong unit. So... Still, I'm going to rate her 3 out of 5 stars. She has a very high recruitment cost at 10,000, and she also joins quite late. At this point during the game, you shouldn't really need to train a fighter. But if you do, she's going to become quite good. So, strong unit, good potential, but not fantastic due to her high recruitment cost and late join time. And then we come to the Cease replacement, Rachel. And Rachel is a nomad, yes. It's the second nomad in the ROM named Rachel. This was completely by accident. I just kind of pick random submissions from chat. I don't really check them first. Uh, so yeah, we have two nomads named Rachel in a ROM. That's kind of confusing, but yeah, she's pretty good for her level. Like 14 base strength, 14 base speed. This can vary a little bit depending on hardware bonuses, obviously. Uh, but if you train her up, she's certainly going to cap most of her stats, except for defense and resistance. She, she has insane potential as a growth unit. One of the things I don't like about her is that she has five cons, so she gets slowed down by almost every single bow, which is not fantastic. Uh, but her growth rates are solid. I do think she joins a little bit too late to be useful, though. I'm only going to rate her two out of five stars. I think at this point of the game, if you want to train a nomad, it's a little bit too late for that. But if you do, she will become good. But again, like, I don't know. She's still a nomad at this stage during the game. Could be good during the Sakai route, though, if you need someone that can actually fight back against the nomad troopers. So I'm not going to say she doesn't have any potential, but I just think it's a little too late. But otherwise, alright unit. And then we come to the Douglas replacement, Alice the Falconite. And when I saw this unit at first, I was like, oh, this is amazing. Solid weapon ranks, I think she has A rank in both lances and swords, so that's really good. 
And look at that defense, like 14 defense, 45 HP. This is a Talky Falconite, I almost said. Tanky Falconite. And 17 strength, that's really strong. Like, she hits like a truck. And of course, keeping her alive in this chapter is also insanely hard, so that's an added difficulty increase, I guess. But I found that Alice was kind of mediocre at best. I'm still gonna rate her 3 out of 5 stars, because having a tanky flyer is very nice. But she doesn't double anything, and that is a problem with Falconites. And because she starts at a level 10 promoted, it's almost impossible to get her levels. Like, she's not gonna get any experience from killing things. She's gonna get like, three points of experience for killing a unit. So, training her up is almost impossible. And considering she has a 10% speed growth, her, her speed will stay at 12. It will not increase. And at this point during the game, 12 speed will not cut it. In fact, she might even get doubled by some enemies, if they're fast. So, a combat unit, she is not. But she is a good utility unit. She can chip, she can leave units low for other units to kill them. She can rescue some units. 12-8 is not fantastic, but it is enough to rescue some units. And 14 defense means she won't die on her own. In fact, she might even take an arrow. With 45 HP and 14 defense, she can take an arrow to the face and still live. And that is kind of nice, although you will get the feel of shield in this chapter, so give her that and she's set. So, again, nice utility, it's nice to have a flyer, but she's not going to, like, be one of your best combat units. Far from it. And then we come to the Nime replacement, a small fox, and this is an absolutely incredible unit. I always knew that Nime would be a strong unit in the ROM, but as a Vyvern Lord, she's actually incredible. She comes with a Rune Sword, which is an item you're normally not allowed to obtain in FE6, but I figured since Nima comes with an Osferatu, it makes sense for her replacement to come with a Rune Sword. So maybe a little bit soft there, but you know, I figured it was fun. And this is actually an incredibly strong weapon, because it deals physical damage. So it actually adds, like, a lot of people don't know this, but the Rune Sword deals physical damage in FE6, so it's actually based off her strength, which means that it does a crazy amount of damage. Uh, Small Fox is an incredibly good unit. I'm actually gonna rate her five stars. You get a free Vyvern Lord with like 20 in almost every stat that can double pretty much everything and kill everything. It's incredibly strong. She's a little bit frail at 32 HP and 11 defense. Like she will die if you put her in range of like a bunch of units, but just her offense alone makes her incredibly good. Like, these stats are really strong. You can use this throughout the game. She's going to be able to kill units, like, in the late game with no problems at all. And her weapon ranks, if I remember correctly, are also pretty good. Yeah, A rank in swords and lances, which is pretty strong. So, overall, just incredibly strong unit. I know rating her five stars this late might seem a little bit weird. Like, ah, like, doesn't does she join too late? But I, I just think a unit that you get for free, that kills pretty much everything, is just so incredibly valuable, and it's a flyer on top of that. Her aid is a little shitty, only has 10 aid, so there's a lot of units she can't rescue at this point, uh, because most of her units will be promoted at this point, but I still think she's a, a, an absolutely wonderful unit. Uh, easy 5 star. And up next, we come to the Juno replacement, Task the Berserker. And I will say, attempting to make Juno a salvageable unit is an arduous task. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, and uh, the creator did his best with this one. I mean, turning Juno into a Berserker is certainly not a bad idea, because it certainly gives her the one thing she lacks, which is offense. But you can see, even as a Berserker, 12 base strength. I mean, that is shit. 14 base speed is not good enough for this point of the game. You're not going to double a lot of enemies with that. 14 con is okay, though. You'll be able to use most axes without losing speed, so that's good, I guess. Uh, out of pity, we decided not to have Tosk's growth rates, kind of similar to what we did with Cecilia, because Cecilia and Juno are just so bad. Uh, but even with good growth rates, Tosk is not really going to grow much, because his base level is so high. He's level 9 promoted. So, again, similar to Alice, he's just going to get, like, 3 points of experience per kill. So, training him is, like... It, it, it won't work. And even if he does get trained up a little bit, he only has 11 levels to grow. So even in the late game, his potential is quite limited. Sure, don't get me wrong, the 30% crit boost is nice. He can occasionally just one-shot a unit, but I just don't think he's very good. Two out of five stars, which is probably the lowest I'd ever rate a Berserker. I don't think a Berserker can ever be a one-star unit just because of their innate crit boost, but Tosk certainly is one of the worst Berserkers I've ever seen. But kudos to the creator for trying to make Juno salvageable. I, I definitely appreciate the effort. So up next, we come to the Dian replacement, Jotaro. And I actually noticed that he did not have his uh, correct class in the latest release of the ROM. He was still a Nomar Trooper, but I fixed that now, and I'm going to ask Ariku to upload the ROM later so we can take care of that. Uh, so Jotaro, uh, he is a Druid, and that's actually pretty nice. He comes with A rank in Dark Magic and C rank in Staves. 
So there's enough Sorat doing a flux. And uh, he obviously replacing Dion, his base level is very high, which means he's pretty hard to grow, and obviously his growth rates aren't very high either. But I'd say he's a pretty decent filler unit. I mean, 13 magic, 17 speed, that's not terrible. He can double some enemies. Uh, obviously at this point during the game, 17 speed starts to become less and less impressive. But like this, I actually think this is a decent filler unit. I think I would rate him 3 out of 5 stars. I think he's perfectly serviceable. C rank and staves means he can use men's staves and restore staves, and he can be a nice staff bot. 13 magic is not super impressive, but it's not terrible either. You know, just overall a pretty solid filler unit. Nothing more, nothing less. He's alright. Yeah, he's alright. And then we come to the Yoda replacement, Raiden. And I will admit, I will admit, I did lower his level from 20 to 15, just because I wanted him to have a couple levels to grow. I didn't think his growth rates would be that good anyway, and they aren't, because they're, you know, they're halved. But I actually didn't realize how strong Raiden would become. Uh, obviously, he has excellent weapon ranks, S rank in swords and A rank in axes. He can use the Durandal at base, which is incredibly good. It's pretty close to being able to use the Aramats as well. Now, being based off Yoder, he is a little frail. 36 HP and 8 defense is not great for a physical unit, but he does have capped rest, so he does not care about magic at all, which is pretty funny. But his offensive stats are actually incredibly good. 21 strength, 23 skill, 22 speed. That is incredible. Like, his offense is ridiculous. And while his luck is not great, it's not particularly low either. And his growth rates, you know, they're actually not terrible. I mean, yeah, he's actually pretty solid. Even though they were halved, he still will grow his stats reasonably. Like, in the five levels that you can give him, he will get a couple points here and there. And he'll continue to be useful. You can field him all the way up until the last chapter, and he'll be useful there. So actually, I'm going to rate him four out of five stars. He's a very serviceable hero that can give you a nice boost to your fighting ability if you happen to need him. And I actually find myself fielding him a lot because I lost a lot of units at this point. So if you're playing an Iron Man run, he's absolutely fantastic. I wouldn't even call him like a filler or a replacement unit. He's just all around a very solid hero. The only problem he has is that he's a little frail. And then we come to the final playable unit in the ROM. I was going to be Katana Manx, but somehow he ended up becoming King Manx instead. I'm not entirely sure how this happened. Uh, but yeah, he does not have Karel's growth rates, and he's a little lower unit. This, this honestly just turned out to be a completely different unit. I don't even know how we ended up doing this. I think chat was very adamant about making him this way. So he's a king, so that means his stats are pretty good. He has capped luck, but zero skill. 17 con. He also comes with the Wekasak, Alfred's sword. So, it's not a very good sword, though, if I'm going to be completely honest. It is 1-2 range, and it is unbreakable, but I find that it's not that great. Uh, you know, this Bangs is just a little bit too slow, and his low skill means that his hit rates are very shaky. But he's pretty tanky, and he can use the Durandal against dragons if you need a dragon killer or just a worm slayer. He's a serviceable filler unit. Uh, I'll rate him like 3 out of 5 stars. I mean, he has good stats. Can serve you well in the Dragon Temple if you need an extra unit, but I don't really see you using him outside of this chapter, at least not in the final chapter, unless you were like lost a lot of units and you really need a tanky sword user. But he's okay. He's okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that's me rating every single unit in the ROM. Uh, let me know if you agreed or disagreed with any of these reviews. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure I got everyone. I hope I didn't miss out on anyone. There's a lot of characters in the Binding Blade, so I might have oopsied and uh, skipped over a unit or two. I, I don't think I did, but let me know in the comment section if I did. And yeah, just let me know if you agreed with any of the ratings. And, you know, like, I love to see you guys discuss this amongst yourselves. So if you want to review all the units, feel free to do that in the comments. Or just point out the ones you disagree with and tell me why you think I'm wrong. I'm expecting a long wall of text from Oof about Bartha for sure. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, to anyone asking, will the FE7 uh, pick my build my unit, whatever, uh, be out soon? Yes, probably will. I haven't decided when I'm going to start it yet, but probably soon. So, hope to see you guys then, and I'll probably make a similar video once we're done with that. Alright, my name is Finn Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!